Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Show. This segment, promise, a promise, not going to talk about bad drivers. Got it out of your system. It's out of my system. I made him go, out, I made him go outside. Yeah. Event and walk around in a circle and run around the parking lot some. He jumped up and down and cussed you know, and breathed in, did the breathing exercises. So <laughs> now calm and cool. Focus. Focused. <laughs> Squirrel. <Yeah. laughs> All right. This segment, I want to talk a little bit about Obama and this, well, and this, not really just him in particular, but this whole gun control debate and. I'm sure most of you have saw the spectacle that was going on this week with him and with his gun control bills looking more and more like they aren't going to get through Congress. He's reverting to this tried and true tactic of using women and children to try and get his unconstitutional legislation passed. Well, this last week, as I said, he had a press conference with parents of children who had been killed by guns. Uh, standing by, behind him what's really interesting is you know that guns could even kill people but i was under the impression it was people had to use it but hey that's me anyway he uh, he was introduced by a lady named katarina rodgard who's a gun control activist and proponent of gun restrictions on us the american citizens she's an activist and and here is why she's an activist in her own words I have been personally affected by gun violence. As a dance teacher, I lost one of my students at the massacre at Virginia Tech. So, she lost one of her students at the massacre at Virginia Tech. Well, I would think that she probably means killed instead of just lost them. Because I'm thinking if she lost them, if you just retraced her steps, she'd probably find them. But, you know, uh, that's me. <laughs> but, lost that money. Well, yeah, so she <laughs> lost uh, some tuition. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. me who said that, so. <laughs> the cards and letters and the email goes to Tori on that. <laughs> but she lost one of her students there that were killed there at Virginia Tech. And that was in 2000, April 2007, the shootings on campus. Now, <laughs> interestingly enough to me, anyway, these activists never promote the cure of these shootings is ar as arming yourself, allowing you to defend yourself. No, see, that's never the answer. But let's just look at that shooting real quickly. Guns were not permitted on campus. And there is a shooting. So something should change. Now, what could that be? Hmm. What is allowing guns on campus, Alex? Yes, I knew I knew that. I knew I knew that one. But that one was really easy. Good answer, Good answer yeah. <laughs> if you don't allow guns on campus and there is a shooting, that tells you something needs to change, correct? Well, the only other option is to allow guns on campus. In fact, that very option was put forth by Todd Gilbert in the Virginia House of Delegates in 2006, before the shootings at Virginia Tech, that bill was intended to forbid public universities in Virginia from preventing students from lawfully carrying a concealed handgun on campus. Now, Virginia Tech University opposed that bill, and it died in subcommittee without making it to the full House for a vote. At that time, the spokesman for Virginia Tech a man named Larry Hink Hinker, 
he praised the defeat of the bill, stating, I'm sure the university community is appreciative of the General Assembly's actions because this will help parents, students, faculty, and visitors feel safe on campus. Of course, notice he said feel safe, not that you actually were safe. So where was the outcry? Where was Katerina when this bill, a piece of legislation that could have prevented more people from dying during that shooting in Virginia Tech, where was she when this was defeated? Why weren't people calling for the heads of the delegates in Virginia's house that opposed this measure, this bill that could have prevented deaths? Here's another clip from Katerina at that thing with President Obama this week. As an attorney, I vow to do something because that I, I feel that my right to feel safe in this country and the rights of our children to feel safe in this country are paramount and worth fighting for. This is typical of the type of argument you get from someone trying to limit your rights. Throwing children in there. Yes, throwing children in there. Oh, good for the children. You don't have a right to feel safe in this country. Now, do you know why? It's because you cannot define safe. What is safe? No one else around? That's the only way you're going to get to that point. When you add another person to the equation, well, they could decide to attack you. And thus, you might not feel safe. No, Katerina, you don't have the right to feel safe. And neither do your children. That's life. Get over it. In this next clip, uh, she's talking about Vice President Biden. He is also an advocate for the rights of women and children. Oh, here we go. More rights. Apparently, women and children have rights that the rest of us don't. Or are we supposed to believe that men, who you notice those are the only group she didn't mention, apparently men have rights that women and children don't. This is the problem. We define too many things as rights that aren't. If exercising a right requires me to give up mine, then it isn't a right, plain and simple. You exercising your rights requires nothing from me, and vice versa. But these liberals make up rights for everything they want on their agendas. Housing, well, that's a right. Food, that's a right. Medical care, hey, that's a right. Now feeling safe. Now, that's a right, too. Not to be outdone talking about rights, here's a quote from the president during that same press conference. Earlier this month, the Senate advanced some of the most important reforms designed to reduce gun violence. All of them are consistent with the Second Amendment. None of them will infringe on the rights of responsible gun owners. What they will do is keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people who put others at risk. Yeah. Now, how can you argue with that? <laughs> Only that his proposed legislation isn't consistent with the Second Amendment. He does admit that it won't infringe on the rights of, quote, responsible, unquote, gun owners. Notice that word responsible, meaning people who act in such a way that the government deems you responsible. So what does that mean? Well, no one knows. But you can bet it'll be along the lines of, Responsible gun owners lock every single gun they have up in a safe, making it practically impossible to get to in the event of a robbery. Or responsible gun owners don't carry their weapons outside their homes except to and from hunting. Or even responsible gun owners only own guns the government allows citizens to possess. The president then goes on to name some of the names of children who have died from gun-related violence. And in that same spirit, we here at the Patrick Reagan Show would like to acknowledge some children who have been saved courtesy of a gun. One of them is Jimmy Rowland from Bethel, Oklahoma. He saved his mother and four other children from a masked man who was threatening them. They fled when Jimmy grabbed the family gun and pointed it at the assailant. Him and his two accomplices, by the way, were lifelong criminals and predators. The local sheriff stated, 
that in all likelihood, Jimmy saved every one of these people's lives. Here's another story. Adam Cummings, he's 38, he's in Wichita, Kansas. He was diagnosed a paranoid schizophrenic. He could function normally at times, then he would snap and become violent. Now, because of his mental illness, his mother, Catherine, Catherine Adams, had raised his daughter, his 15-year-old daughter. On March 17, 2000, at 10 p.m., Cummins, who was vis- described as vis- visibly agitated, appeared at his mom's home. Now, having first knowledge of his violent tendencies, she locked the front door and refused to let him inside. So what did he do? Did he walk off and say, oh, the door's locked? No, he kicked in the door. Now, what he did when he got inside was he assaulted her and started hitting her in the head with a claw hammer, fracturing her skull. Now, while this was going on, she yelled to her granddaughter to go get the gun. She wasn't, didn't have to go figure out the safe combination, didn't have to run some little thing to get into the drawer that holds the gun. The 15-year-old ran and grabbed the gun. She got the gun from the nightstand in her grandmother's upstairs bedroom. It's a handgun. Now, by this time she had done that, her father, the crazy, paranoid schizophrenic, had bludgeoned her mother or his mother her grandmother into unconsciousness and then he started coming up the stairs she met him at the top his daughter met him at the top of the stairs fired one shot striking him in the abdomen and he died a few minutes later a police said over a long period cummins had had many dealings with law enforcement officials and mental health agencies he had threatened police officers mental health workers even his ex-wife For years, he had fought with his wife for custody of the girl, and the family had tried numerous times to have him institutionalized. And on the day he died, the day his daughter ended up having to shoot him, he had called his ex-wife and threatened to kill her. Police credited the 15-year-old girl with using appropriate force to stop a vicious assault. Now, somehow I don't think either of these children alone would have had the physical power to stop these assailants, but having... And knowing how to use a gun proved to be their ultimate protector, the tool that stood between them and certain death to them and their loved ones. That's strange. I've not heard about that all over the news. No, you won't. Uh, I've not heard it every 30 minutes like anything else. It doesn't fit the agenda. And that's just two. That's not even... These things are happening all around the country every day. You never hear about those. No. Never. So. (laughs) A little interesting note. All right, we're up on the bottom of the hour break already here at the Patrick Green Show. Actually, we ran just a little over, so the next segment may be a little short. But when we come back, we'll hit a little bit more of this and look at, uh, let's see, what else we got here. Well, we'll have something. (laughs) And it'll be good. It'll be Easter. It'll be Easter, exactly. We'll see you in a couple of minutes.